this session, Zachary Croman, who will speak about uh, rational embeddings of co convex uh, polyhedra. And the uh, mentor is uh, Sheila Devadas of Stanford. Uh, she used to be a prime student uh, in the past, but now she is a prime mentor. Thank you. Please. Hi, uh, my name is Zach Croman, and my presentation is on the rational embeddings of convex polyhedra. The main theorem I will reference is the following, uh, or the question. Do all convex polyhedra have embeddings uh, with all rational edge lengths? Now, we define an embedding of a polyhedron to be another polyhedron which is uh, combinatorially equivalent to it. Uh, informally, this means that they have the same structure. So, for example, any four points uh, in three-dimensional space will form an embedding of a tetrahedron even if they don't all have the same distances because the um, polyhedron that they generate has the same structure as that of a tetrahedron. As an example for this problem, the dodecahedron uh, clearly has such an embedding because it exists as a platonic solid and thus uh, has an embedding with all edge lengths equal to one. But it does not have, if you perturb any of these vertices slightly, the, you lose the uh, planarity conditions on some of the faces, so one of the faces will no longer be planar. Uh, and that sort of demonstrates how this is a uh, difficult problem to attack simply by moving around the polyhedra. The main theorem that is relevant here is Steinitz's theorem, which uh, characterizes the graphs of convex polyhedra as all graphs which are planar and three-connected. Uh, a graph is planar if it can be drawn in the plane with no two edges intersecting. And it is three-connected if, uh, after removing any two points from this graph, uh, it is still connected. Uh, this theorem is significant because it allows us to deal with questions involving polyhedra uh, in a graph theoretic sense, which often allows us more techniques with, uh, with which to attack the problems. Uh, Steinitz originally proved his theorem using it, uh, an induction method. and this proof can be, uh, if you follow this proof, it can be shown that all polyhedra have embeddings with every vertex coordinate rational, which is part of what uh, motivated our problem on rational edge lengths. Uh, as an additional result, it has been shown that every polyhedron has a so-called uh, canonical embedding, which is an embedding where all, ver all edges are tangent to the unit sphere. And furthermore, the center of mass of these tangency points is at the origin. Uh, these results serve to demonstrate some of the uh, maneuverability of embeddings of polyhedra. The most significant step towards a positive answer to our question has been a theorem of Sun, which states that uh, all simplicial polyhedra have rational embeddings, where a polyhedron is simplicial if all its faces are triangles. This is a very uh, helpful step, but it is uh, not. It, it's uh, possible only because simplicial polyhedra have the property that the vertices can be slightly perturbed while preserving structure, because there are no planarity conditions to break. All the faces will remain planar if you move one of the vertices a little bit. Uh, this problem can be thought of as one example of a set of rational distance problems. Most of, most of these problems take place in two-dimensional space. The most important one of these is a Harbour's conjecture, which asks if all planar graphs have embeddings with all edge lengths rational. Uh, additionally, it is unknown if there exists a point in two-dimensional space, which is a rational distance from all vertices of the unit square, <coughs> although this has been solved for all other uh, regular uh, polygons. And so we hope to use some of the techniques that have been uh, used to address these problems and extend them to three dimensions. Three uh, it is obvious that if you that a regular polygon does have an embedding with all uh, side lengths rational, because the regular, poly uh, regular polygons always exist. Uh, and you can take one with side length one, for example. And so in that sense, the obvious corollary to our problem in two dimensions is uh, very easy to address. Uh, however, it can be extended to look at so-called rational distance sets, which are sets with all pairwise distances between vertices rational. Uh, very little is known about rational distance sets uh, in two dimensions. It is unknown if there exists a dense rational distance set in the plane. And in fact, it is even unknown if there exists a rational distance set of eight points with no three collinear and no four on a circle. However, it is known that there exists 
rational distance sets uh, of infinite size with all vertices on a circle. This can be constructed in one of a variety of ways, uh, including a very nice trigonometric construction. Uh, and we hope, and that's the, uh, given that that is the only really nice example of rational distance sets, we hope to uh, use that sort of technique to extend to three dimensions. And so that, that motivates the following problems uh, in three dimensions, which are, does there exist a dense rational set, uh, a rational distance set in three dimensions? And does there exist a subset of the sphere which is dense in the sphere and is a rational distance set in three dimensions? Uh, furthermore, we, this uh, motivates looking at polyhedra, which have all vertices on the sphere. And we turn these polyhedra to be inscribable. Uh, for a long time, it was thought that all polyhedra were uh, of inscribable type, until Steinitz gave a method for constructing examples of polyhedra which were not inscribable. Uh, surprisingly, some of his polyhedra were simplicial, again, meaning that all faces were triangular, uh, which was very surprising because simplicial polyhedra uh, have a great degree of freedom. As an ex his example was the triacus tetrahedron here. Uh, which can be created by taking a tetrahedron and uh, extending uh, triangular pyramids off of, off of the, uh, each of the <coughs> Now this does not have an embedding with all vertices on a sphere. Uh, the easiest way to see this and to get an understanding of why, if you take the natural uh, attempt and just project all, the, all vertices in the uh, obvious embedding uh, onto a sphere, the polyhedron you get is actually a cube. And so you have extra planary conditions, and so it's not uh, equivalent to uh, this tetrahedron. And if you perturb any of the vertices of this cube very slightly, the polyhedron that you get uh, bends inward, and so it's no longer convex, which is a very important condition for embeddings. And so we looked at the question of how many simplicial polyhedra have uh, spherical embeddings. And uh, we took a uh, computational approach to this problem, trying to uh, establish a lower bound on the uh, number of polyhedra which have a uh, number of simplicial polyhedra which have uh, embeddings on a sphere. Uh, and the way we did this was we uh, looked at the operation of edge contraction, which takes uh, one edge and contracts it down to a point uh, by contracting it. Uh, and by the same Steinitz theorem, uh, this takes a simplicial polyhedra and uh, maps it to a smaller simplicial polyhedra. Uh, you can see that it remains, uh, this example here remains simplicial when you uh, contract the edge and all faces are still triangles. And then uh, we measure the probability of being able to uncontract this edge and undo this operation while still uh, having all vertices lying on sphere. And so that allows us to uh, make this claim which is that a randomly uh, chosen simplicial polyhedra on n vertices uh, is inscribable with probability at least 2 over 9 to the power of n. Um, we pose this as a conjecture because the proof, uh, as currently stands, has a uh, minor but remarkably persistent uh, issue which I have not been able to address. Uh, however, we can make the slightly weaker but uh, uh, actually proven claim <laughs> that uh, if you choose a uh, simplicial polyhedra uh, with all the vertices having a degree at most 9, it is inscribable probability at least 1 over 4 to the n. Um, we uh, hope future work to, uh, will generate stronger bounds in both directions on the number of inscribable simplicial polyhedra. Uh, in particular, we conjecture that there is not a positive proportion of simplicial polyhedra which are inscribable. Uh, or in other words, that the fraction of simplicial polyhedra, which are inscribable, uh, will tend to zero as the number of vertices uh, gets larger. Uh, we also hope to extend these computational techniques to measuring the number of not necessarily simplicial polyhedra of any a polyhedra of any sort, which are inscribable. Uh, and finally, while it is known that all uh, that there are polyhedra which do not have embedding on a sphere, uh, there are other existence problems which are still uh, unresolved. For, uh, in addition to our rational distance problem, it is unknown if every polyhedra has an embedding with all vertices, uh, with, with all faces having each vertex, all its vertices inscribed in an ellipse, for example. Uh, these existence problems will also be areas for future work. Uh, finally, I'd like to thank uh, the Primes program for providing this opportunity.
Professor Robbie Vakil uh, for suggesting this project, and of course my mentor, Sheila Devadas, who has been uh, extraordinarily helpful for the project. That any small, any arbitrarily small uh, circle contains the point. Another question. Um, so you, you mentioned the probability of having a lower bound of like 2x to the other one, or 2 x to the other, and what your conditions for allowable conditions for quadrilateral tells each other. Um, have you computed that probability numerical for small values? Uh, I have not, although for small enough values, uh, the majority of uh, simple values are, are inscribable. Um, for example, that triathlete region was, was the smallest example of any polyhedra, which is uh, non inscribable. Um, I haven't taken a computational approach to measuring. Uh, Can I have a look at your conjecture again? Sure. How do you randomly choose? What's your. Uh, so, this is. If you take the set of all simple polyhedra and then choose one, basically this is saying that among all simple polyhedra on n vertices, at least two over nine to the n, uh, as a fraction of them, are inscribable. No, it's not. I think I'm stuck. Where's the. You have a polyhedra? Yeah, so uh, I mean uh, up to combinatorial equivalence. So among the set of uh, structural polyhedra, combinatorial polyhedra. So for the first problem you mentioned, which is uh, embedding with a uh, rational edge length, yes. uh, is it known uh, an example of a polyhedron that you can this way? Well, well no, that's, that, that isn't the problem. And could you repeat about this kind of, there is a conjecture about planar graphs, uh, two dimensions, so could you repeat what does, uh, what does this conjecture? Yeah, this is a uh, Harbour's conjecture, and it asks whether all uh, planar graphs have embeddings uh, in the plane with all edge lengths rational. Um, but edges have to be straight? Yes, so it extends uh, Theory's theorem, which is that all uh, planar graphs have embeddings with all, edge, with all edges straight lines, or straight line segments. Okay. So it, uh, these are called integer theory embeddings, meaning that all okay. uh, edges are straight lines, right. are, are seconds. Mm -hmm. Other questions? Does it approach zero as n goes to infinity? The, the lower bound does. Um, okay. I believe it approaches zero as an upper bound, but I have not shown this. Okay. Other questions? Okay, let's find do you have a, do you have any specifically conjectured upper bounds? Uh no. Not a <laughs> but, um, you can use the example of a triathlete region to establish an upper bound just based on uh, that. Uh, having it essentially as a um, part of the polyhedra, it can't be inscribable. It has this example of a non-inscribable polyhedra uh, as a part of it for some suitable definition of being a part. Uh, this isn't the area that I particularly worked uh, in, though. Other questions? Okay, let's see.